guys and welcome. My name is Shelly Bro. I am a visual artist and arts educator. Today, we are gonna look at the art of Eugene Martin and inspired from his art, we're gonna create some collages. This video is part of the Acadiana Center for the Arts online series, Virtual Art Studio, where teaching artists present lessons in visual arts, dance, music, and more. And these are lessons that you can do from anywhere. I tell you what, let's head into the main gallery and look at the work from Eugene Martin. And our visual arts director, Jake Falk, is gonna give us a tour. Hello, uh, my name is Jake Falk. I'm the visual arts director and curator here at Acadiana Center for the Arts. And we're here in our main gallery um, with the exhibition Heterochronic Collages, an exhibition by Eugene James Martin who um, is an African-American artist originally from Washington, D.C. and he spent the latter part of his life here in Lafayette, Louisiana creating works, many of which you see here. Um, he was a very prolific artist and prolific means he created a lot of works. So um, he was always creating and always thinking and rethinking um, approaches to artworks and so what you see here is a collection of 177 paintings, artworks, collages. They're all kind of the same thing when we um, talk about Eugene. Um, and what he would do is he would take certain passages and certain sections of paintings and he would cut them out and then he would make a collage um, into another painting. And so what you see is he references, he uh, quotes um, certain paintings in new paintings. So instead of like um, most collage artists will take a magazine and they'll cut out a picture of a bird. And then that picture of the bird will go in a castle. And then in that castle, that castle will be superimposed onto a beach. And so that'll be um, maybe a typical collage. Whereas Eugene will take an older work of his, you know, something created in 1984, and then he'll cut that up, and then he'll take that passage, that face, and put it into something from 1994. And then he'll cut that up, and then he'll put something in a, in a painting from uh, 2000. Uh, and those uh, types of collages are called heterochronic collages. And so they mean of time. So um, his past self, his 1984 self, is collaborating with his 1994 self, and then those two are collaborating with the 2000 self, which is all kind of fun and, um, and creative and a very different and special thing that he does uh, in his own way. And so as the curator here at Acadiana Center for the Arts, um, what I do is I arrange paintings and I situate what works go next to each other. And as you flow through the galleries, you'll see um, that I've taken his influences in the way he composes paintings. So within the painting, the way he um, places one thing next to another in a very gridded format. So it's like a bunch of squares. Uh, what I did was I took all the paintings and I hung them that way on the wall so you can think of the wall as a, a collage and um, and they're fun and they're not all um, level there they change a lot and there's a, um, a funkiness to it a real fun and creative way of looking at works so when you walk through here um, you're also seeing the works in different fun uh, arrangements so much like what he would do within his own collages come on out and see Eugene James Martin heterochronic collages his work will be up through May uh, the May art walk which happens on every second Saturday and uh, hope to see you here Wow thank you so much for that tour Jake I don't know about you guys, but when I walk into that gallery, I just get so excited with all the beautiful colors and artwork everywhere. It's just so exciting to be in that space. What you may not have realized that in each piece, they are made of tons of smaller pieces of older works that Eugene made. So let's look at some of his work 
and we're going to talk about the word collage. So in this piece, you are going to see this bright blue and orange and red and green, but I want you to look a little closer. You might see some cutouts of work. You might see some paint on top of some work and you see all these different layers. That's different pieces. So when we're talking about collage work, we're gonna be taking a bunch of pieces of all these different materials and putting together to make one beautiful piece. Now, in this piece, we don't really see anything that we can identify. So that's what we call abstract work. But you guys can have fun and maybe make a little robot look, looking guy. Maybe you come in with some magazine pieces that have this beautiful texture. And maybe you're just looking at some geometric shapes. Maybe you're tearing pieces to put them together. Or maybe you're cutting them nice and clean and straight. So at each of these pieces, when you look at his work, I want you to try and pick apart all the different areas that might be made from something different. Now, I just said a lot of crazy art words, but as we create together, I'm explaining what all this means to you guys. You know what? Before we get started, let me take a moment to tell you what we're making today. We're gonna make a collage. And all that is, guys, is taking all different materials and pulling them together to make one piece of art. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to show you a bunch of things that you can gather before we get started. I want to show you some things that you can go collect before we start making our collage. So as you see here, some things you might want to gather is some glue, whether you have Elmer's glue or glue stick, doesn't matter. You can even grab tape. You can grab some markers, some pencils. You may want some scissors. Then I want you to get creative. I started taking scraps from mail before I threw it away. Some old birthday tissue. Now, I want you to ask permission from your parents, but maybe go into that pantry because cereal boxes and soda pop boxes all have these great colors and images that you can use. Some construction paper. You can even get some dryer sheets to put over some cardboard. Now, I know that you guys might have some magazines at your house. Don't forget about the text in the magazine. It's all the words. Because maybe you want words on yours. Maybe your collage is about a story you want to tell. Some old books. Now, when I say old, another thing you might want to ask permission for before you go ripping up some storybooks in your house. Maybe you guys do some writing, so maybe you want to pull some things from your journals. In magazines, look through some really cool pictures that maybe we can cut out and use. I even found this picture. I mean, it looks like it's already collage, but I really love the colors and the flowers. And he kind of looks like he's thinking. It brings about an emotion. Now, I'm an art teacher, so you might think this is cheating, but I brought in a bunch of different scraps before my students threw them away. Now you might say, but I don't have that. Well, you can stop right now and go make all kinds of watercolor or drawings that you wanna add in your collage. Maybe you wanna do some cutouts that you can use. But guys, you don't have to do all that. Sometimes just using those bold colors like we saw in Eugene's work is perfectly fine. So I want you to pause the video and I want you to go on a scavenger hunt and grab all the things that you think you can use in your collage. And you know what? You can even go outside. Now as long as things are dry and it hasn't rained, you can gather leaves, you can gather dried flowers. So I want you to have fun. Anything you grab in the house, make sure you have permission to use and then come back and we'll get started. Now we're gonna to get to the fun part. We are gonna start making our collage inspired by Eugene Martin's work. The very first thing you need to get is what we're gonna call a base paper. Now I grabbed this piece of cardboard just because I like that it's a little thicker and sturdy. So maybe the back of a notebook, the inside of a cereal box, 
Or, I mean, does Amazon come to your house? But you know what? If you don't have something sturdy like that, just get a regular sheet of paper. It's totally cool. I want you to know that in making collages, there is no wrong answer. So I want to start by showing you guys how I prep my materials. At any point, you can pause because I might mention something that you know you have and you want to go run and get. So pause the video at any time you need, guys, because um, you can always come back and I'll be here waiting for you. So I'm going to start with this magazine page. Remember how I showed you these hands I found? I just thought they were so beautiful. You can either choose to cut around the hands. And guys, when you're cutting, let me show you something. It does not have to be perfect. I sometimes like a little bit of background behind my hands when I cut. So you can either cut them out. I'm gonna go ahead and move this to side. I'm not gonna throw it away yet because maybe I like that black and white pattern that's happening with those words. Now I just said the word pattern. I'm gonna use a lot of art vocabulary today. And so when I do, I'm gonna to stop to explain what those words mean. Now, I, I think you guys probably know what patterns are because you use that a lot in math class, but a, a pattern is something that repeats itself over and over. So when I look at this text, when I think of pattern, I think of the white lines that are made on that black background. So you might be looking for things with patterns or not. So you see how I started cutting it out here? Maybe you do want to cut out every little piece of that hand. Now, that's going to take some time. So again, if you find images that you want to do that, go ahead and stop the video and start cutting out all your images. But it does not have to be perfect. Let me move this. Oh, I love this shape and all those curves. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this over to the side because I might want to use that later. Another way of cutting things out is, I mean, you can just tear it. And you know what? When we tear things, it's okay if I chop off a little piece of that thumb. They can't feel it. So you can cut along the image. You can cut around it. You can tear it out. It doesn't matter because we're going to figure out later how we're going to use this. So I'm going to go ahead and on the side, I'm going to put all the pieces that I think I want to use. Remember this guy? Another thing, maybe I just want his hand. Maybe I want his face. Maybe I just want that flower. It's whatever you guys want. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go ahead and have fun and tear off the bottom because I don't want that. So I'm going to put that aside, I'm not throwing anything away yet. But I love this flower right here. So let's go ahead and make that separate. So I might have to turn it upside down on the camera to cut it. But just so you guys can see what I'm doing. And you know what? This kind of reminds me of Eugene's work because that solid blue and yellow background and then something on top. So I really like this. And you know what? I kind of like the white edge of the paper when I ripped it off the magazine. So I'm going to go ahead and put that aside. Now, what if you guys start digging in the mail before your folks throw things away? I found these cool bubble wraps. Now, yeah, we can sit here and pop this all day long. Oh, actually, they don't pop. Oh, there they go. But I just like the texture. Ugh, there's another one of those big words. So when I talk about texture in art, the texture is the way something feels. But in your artwork, the texture is the way something looks like it feels. So I like the look of that texture. So we're going to pull that aside. Remember, other things you can get is different color construction paper where you can, I'm going to go ahead and rip up some pieces. Maybe you guys want to cut out some circles or some stars. Or maybe you want to draw a house and cut that out. Whatever you want. Some other things I grabbed was some tracing paper my students used that had these really cool designs on them. I can use that. You know what else is cool that you guys do have is dryer sheets. When your parents do laundry, they throw that in the dryer to make things smell good and not be so staticky. Look what happens when you put that over a piece of paper that has color. That gives a really cool texture look to it. What else do we have? Oh, remember that Dr. Pepper? 
box. Maybe you guys have your favorite cereal. Cereal boxes have beautiful bold colors just like Eugene Martin's work and a lot of fun text that's the lettering see how that P is really designed really fun let me put this flat so you guys can see so maybe you go dig and things like that lastly I want to show you maybe you have some old artwork or maybe you just want to go make some artwork you see how I ripped it up just because they had other mistakes around it and my student was going to throw it away I'm like no we're gonna save all these scraps for when we make textures. So you guys have all kinds of things that you can be using in your collage. So I'll tell you what, pause the video, go get all the items, get them all set up, cut it, tear it, whatever you wanna do. And when you're done, come back so we can see what we do next. Okay guys, so right now, you have all your pieces cut out and ready to go or torn up. And it's okay if while we're working you think of something else because you pause the video and go get it. Or you might want to cut something down and that's okay. Make sure you have your base paper or a cardboard, whatever you're using, and some glue. So I have a glue stick and a glue bottle. Either way, doesn't matter. But before we even get started gluing, that's going to come later, I want you to play with the position of your pieces. And what we call in art, when we position things down, it's our composition, the way we lay things out. So we're gonna work with our composition on our piece of art. I'm gonna wanna look at different things to make a good composition. Oh, and I wanted to show y'all, I like to write my journal. So I tore a piece out and this journal piece was about things I love to do when I get bored. So you know how like on a really rainy day or when you're not feeling well, like I like to read and spend time with my family or make some art. So I wanted that to be part of my piece. So maybe your composition, your piece of art tells a story. Maybe it tells us about some way you're feeling. And so what I want you to do is think about Eugene's work and all those bold colors, but also how did things work together? See how this just looks thrown on there? Now that's okay if that's what you want and what you're feeling, but I really wanna look at how Eugene made things work together. It's almost like a piece of a puzzle. Because in his work, what I get so inspired by is how in the end, it looks like one piece, not all these several different things. So I want you to play around with how you're gonna lay things out. So I got all my scraps. Ooh, you know what this reminds me of when I see these? Maybe I wanna weave my paper in and out of each other with different colors. And right now I just have this orange and yellow. So maybe I wanna get a different color. Maybe I'm tucking something underneath. Maybe I'm putting something on top and that makes it work together better. Now, another thing in design that makes a good composition is contrast, opposites. So if I say the word contrast, I want you to think opposites. So things that are opposites are big and small, thick and thin. So you see how these are all the same size? Maybe to give more contrast, I'm gonna get another color, but I'm gonna go ahead and cut it thinner. And so this might help it have a different a little contrast in there. You see that? And I actually like those colors together. Maybe you want emphasis on something. Emphasis is one major thing that stands out. It gets your attention like pow, emphasis. So that, that's a lot of words. So in your composition, that's the layout. You wanna look for things to contrast. Maybe you wanna have emphasis on one area. That's the area that I go straight to. So I want you to play around, move things around, and I want them to look like they work together. They need to be there. Now, you know what I just thought of? I only have this one place that I have words. I need to balance that out. So to balance that out, I need to bring words in somewhere else. So that's the only journal piece I took out. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna grab my page from a book or a magazine, and maybe it's, words that mean something to me. And if you can hear, sorry, I'm just tearing it up. Doesn't that bring a nice texture? You learn in all these art words. So to balance it out, I'm gonna put it somewhere else on my composition or my canvas, whatever you wanna call it. 
Do I have to be able to read and make out everything it's saying? No. But I know that artist is maybe trying to tell us something. Now, this has a weird flow. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the, and flow is just my word, guys. That's nothing fancy. But you see how this watercolor paper has the same kind of texture happening? So I have two words, two watercolors. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this for a second. One rule of design is things are always best in odd numbers. So odd numbers, right? Three, five, seven. So maybe I need another watercolor. You know what I realize? I don't have one. So you guys know what I can do. I'm gonna cut up one that's right up here. And I'm just gonna go straight across, nice clean line like I saw in Eugene's work. And I'm gonna go ahead and pull this somewhere else in my design. So what I want you guys to do is play around your pieces. Don't copy what I'm doing. Like, don't go run and get construction paper just as I had construction paper. Maybe you don't have construction paper. I want you to use whatever you have. Maybe I don't want people to know that's hands. Maybe I just like what's on them. Oop, and I did have. So maybe I just show something like that. So I want you to play around and remember the words we learned. We learned contrast. So opposites, big, small, thick, thin, black, white. Balance, we talked about having odd numbers to balance things out, okay? And texture, things that look like they feel like something. Um, the dry sheet kind of looks like a texture. We can even glue it like this to make it texture. So go ahead and play with your layout. And when you're ready, come back to the video and we're gonna see how we put all this stuff together. I don't know about you guys, but that was so much fun. So after I played and played and moved my pieces around, this is what I came up with. Now I want you to know a few things. I know that I didn't finish up an area here and I'm fine with that. You can't even see my base paper, that cardboard, and that's okay that I went off the page because when I'm done, I'm gonna show you a trick. We could just cut that part off. But I wanna talk about a few things before we start gluing. I wanna make sure I looked at my composition and followed some of the rules we talked about. So I thought about when we were talking about odd numbers to balance things out. So I have three places I use text, and textures and it doesn't have to be in three maybe it's five and it's okay if you just have two i thought about how i was inspired by eugene martin's work in those big bright beautiful bold colors how things layered on top of each other are just laid next to each other so i think i like my design and i know some areas you can see the cardboard but i also know when i'm gluing things down that things might shift around and that's okay. I might change my mind on something when I start gluing, that's okay too. So I have regular glue and a glue stick. It's whatever you like, there's no wrong answer. I have the glue stick in my hand, so I'm gonna start with that. Now, I have objects on top of each other, objects next to each other, objects going around each other. You know what I like to do? I just like to start gluing and just see what happened. So I'm gonna start over here on this corner, get my glue stick ready. I'm gonna go ahead and put the glue on the base paper so I'm not making a mess. You might wanna put a sheet of paper underneath just in case. And that could be newspaper, old magazines, or a cut up box. Put my glue and I'm gonna stick it. Notice that this whole thing's not totally glued down. I can do that at the very end because I want this guy to go underneath it. So again, I'm gonna get my, my glue, my piece, I'm gonna carefully lift it up and slide it out. Wait, this is more at the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is stop for a second. I like to glue on my base paper and look, I can get all that in there. And I'll use regular glue too, it doesn't matter. Put that down. And then it's okay if this guy goes off a little cause I'm gonna show you a trick for that. Oh wait, I have this little guy. So I'm just gonna move this. So see how I'm kind of just working with it. Try not to move my pieces too much. I'm gonna go ahead and use this glue now because I can't, oh wait. 
that's really cool. Now here's where you gotta make a decision. I really like that shape, but the more I think about it, I'm not using that anywhere else. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, it was cool, but maybe for another design. Put some glue, and you know what? I don't remember exactly where it was, but I know it's kinda in here. So when I'm gluing things down, now I am making sure that I'm gonna eventually cover the board. If I slide this guy over, I like the way that looks. So what might be easier is I'm gonna put my finger down, I'm gonna lift up on the other side, and I'm gonna kinda put my glue like this. So now you're getting all crazy. Then I'm gonna push it down. Sometimes you might have to pause and let it dry a little bit, and that's okay. So I'm still keeping my design as I'm gluing things down. But you know what? I just have this orange right here. So I don't know if I like the way that's working. So I'm moving that off my page. Let me glue. And notice I'm working one direction to another. And it's just so I can keep my design kind of how it was. You can work all over. It's, e ooh, I didn't glue that one down. So that happens a lot. So what I do is I'm gonna do this. Kinda hold all this down. I'm gonna lift up. Go ahead and do this. Now I'm going a little faster than I normally go because of the video. Guys, sometimes I can do this for hours. I can take a break, come back to it. It's really whatever you're feeling. If you're allowed to keep your artwork out, it's maybe something you do over a few days, but you can easily get this done today. As I go, if I think I'm finishing with pieces, go ahead and glue this down. Let's see if we can get it to pop, that'd be fun. Ah. And it sticks out a little bit, but that's okay. Because really when you look at Eugene Martin's work, some things did come out a little higher than others. I don't know where this guy was, but I kind of like him floating like that. So it kind of makes it look like it was already a piece of that blue paper. And <laughs> I just grabbed this glue. Again, it doesn't matter. I guess I like working with both. I never knew that until just now. And then I'm gonna glue that part down. So you see, things are changing. If I would have taken a picture where I started, I guarantee it didn't look just like this, but I'm gonna keep going and building onto my composition. But remembering the rules that I was following. So you just keep playing, remembering the rules that we are looking at and always keeping the work of Eugene Martin in the back of your head, inspired by his pieces we saw That was so much fun. Now, before we finish up, I went all over outside my board, so let me show you what you do. I'm gonna go ahead and carefully pick mine up. Now, you might wanna give more drying time because I kinda just finished gluing, but I'm gonna flip it over and watch. I'm just gonna cut off the excess. We did so much today, guys. Not only did we make collages, and hey, you guys are collage experts now. I hope you continue to create. Start saving scraps. Start 
go on and scavenger hunt for pieces. Maybe your collages get bigger. Remember, you can make them for gifts. You can make them just to create and feel good. But remember all the things we learned today. We went into the gallery and saw over 200 pieces from Eugene Morton. And you know what? You guys can come down to the Acadiana Center for the Arts and see them for yourselves. They're up till May 14th. And if you see me here, please come make sure you tell me hello. Remember all the things we learned. We learned how to make collage. You learned so much art vocabulary, texture and pattern and composition. So I hope you use these things you learned and continue to create. And make sure that you come back next week for a new virtual art studio. Bye guys, till next time, peace.